Hey, God bless you guys. Uh, I want to share with you guys just some encouragement um, as I've been encouraged. Uh, you know, uh, day by day, things go on. Uh, life, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's definitely not easy, but uh, it is worth it. God is worth it. Like, He never promised us a, an even, easy walk, an easy life. But he did promise us it would be worth it in the end because this life is like a flea and vapor. It's here today, gone tomorrow, but eternity is forever, you know? So that's what we got to look past this temporal existence, beyond that to where the Lord is. You know, long for our heavenly home and the things of this world to be dull and dreary. Um, yeah, so praise God. Uh, but before I go any further, I just want to praise the Lord, you know, and give glory to God. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, <clears throat> that anybody listening to this, God, would be encouraged and edified, and you would be glorified, God, and you would just be exalted through it, and then Satan would be brought low and put under our feet in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we praise you, Lord Jesus. And glory to your awesome, worthy name, for you are holy. And I pray, God, that anybody that just needs a touch in any way, shape, or form, God, they would receive that to your glory and point them to you, Lord. And I ask this all in the name of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, who sent to the Father, came in the flesh. Amen and amen. <clears throat> so, um, like I was saying, you know, things are getting darker day by day you know but that's when the light shines the brightest so when it's dark out you are shining bright you know and that's in your families that's in your friends co-workers uh, strangers alike when you go out somewhere you have the light of God in you burning you're that burning torch blazing you know and how sweet is that that you guys are his ambassadors, his ministers of reconciliation, you know, that's, that's amazing. We're, it's an honor and a privilege that he has given all of us, you know, so, um, yeah, and it is hard, you know, because a lot of times we're rejected from those we love the most. They treat us differently because of who we serve and how we act and what we don't do or what we do do. <clears throat> so, but you know what? That's just because they are what they are or say what they say is because of where they are spiritually, what, what they don't know. They have not tasted and seen that God is good like we have, but we were there at one point. So we need to not forget that and release mercy and grace to them. And yes, that doesn't excuse it. It doesn't make it easy. But you know what? We want to see them to you know, come to that saving grace through faith in Jesus Christ as well. We want them to be delivered and redeemed and regenerated from the inward outward. So we, you got to keep pressing on for your loved ones and don't quit. And I'm speaking from experience because I've been praying for my family for over seven, almost 17 years. And I'm not going to quit to my last breath because God gave me the breath to do so. And he called me and raised me up as a warrior for my family to intercede, you know, for them, to stand in the gap for my loved ones and everyone else that I come in contact with. Glory to God and honor and privilege. We have to go forth in the power of his might. It's not in our own strength or wisdom or reasoning, understanding. It's God and God be alone the glory. The days ahead, it's going to get darker. Darkness is going to cover this earth. Gross darkness, the people. But your light will arise and shine. And people will be drawn to that light. Because in darkness, if a light comes in, darkness flees. So the... People are going to be drawn to that. It's going to be a beacon of hope. It's going to be a lighthouse to draw people in so they can taste and see how good our Father is. Praise God. You know, so, yeah, it is hard. You know, when, when the power goes out, um, it's, we, we should be prepared as much as we can be prepared. Um, and whatever that looks like, you know, with uh, necessities. But here's the thing is we're all limited in all those things because there's always going to be something else we could have got. There's always could have been something else we could have done. 
And there's so many uh, variables that are not planned for that we don't know. But here's the thing. God knows every single detail. He knows every single dimension, every single angle of everything. He knows all the plans of the enemy, but God and God knows it all, so he sees it all. He is in all, but Satan knows none of God's plans as far as he doesn't know all the details. Um, maybe he does know some things because there's an allowance to that, but he certainly does not know everything that the Lord has planned and everything that Satan is allowed to do, because there is an allowance for him to do what he does, but it's ultimately to destroy his works and to destroy the devil himself and to glorify God and fulfill the word of God. So remember that even in these dark days ahead, there's hope because the hope, the blessed hope is in you. And we look for that. We look for the blessed hope of his glorious appearing of our great God and King, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Yeshua HaMashiach. So that's what we look for, as Titus 2.13 says. Um, but we have to be careful not to look at everything else as much like what Satan's doing. But we need to be looking at what Jesus Christ is doing, because that's what matters. Because what God does will prosper and everything God does it prospers and everything he says for it to be it is it happens because his creational power and his word and his rhema word the spoken word of God and remember that he lives in us and greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world so no matter what comes of these agendas these plots these schemes these evil demons and devils they will not overcome God's church and the church will not always be like it is currently. Um, because Holy, Holy Zion is coming forth. New Jerusalem is coming forth. And Israel, spiritual Israel, it's spiritual now. Um, yes, physical, but it's spiritual like us collectively as the true remnant bride of Jesus Christ. You know, because we're the bride, he's the groom. And Jesus Christ is worthy of the reward of his suffering. So, you know, go after him and the things of him because that's going to endure forever. That's going to endure the fires that are coming. And remember what the word of God says, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we are those harvesters in this labor field. We need to continue to harvest. And the harvest that is coming, that is ahead, is going to be so much greater. So... He is raising us up for such a time as this. Glory to God. He's imbuing us with his power from on high. And he's going to even more as never before. We read in Acts, you know, Acts chapter 2, where it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them as tongues as of fire, being distributed and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Glory to God. That's going to happen again, but greater this time because we're in the end of the ends. The fulfillment of all things is coming to fruition. Praise God. Because there is going to be a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So we are that spiritual city. Because he said, we are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a city on a hill and a house that cannot be hidden, you know, and it's a lamp that is not to be hidden under a bushel, under a basket, you know, praise God, glory to God. That's us. We are his, his ambassadors, his harvesters, his witnesses for the days ahead. You know, that's, that's us in Jesus. It's him through us. Praise God. So. When the power goes out, it will go out. When the water shut off, when they enforce demonic uh, ordinances and agendas, what source are you connected to? Because even if you have your own means of generating power, that's going to run out. There's going to be components that break down, but not so in and through the power of the Most High God because His power never runs out. It is never depleted. It's never diminished. It's never weakened. He never grows weak or weary. 
You know, he's never famished. Because even if he was hungry, he would not tell us, for the earth is his and all his fullness and everything therein. The silver's his, the gold's his, all the cattle on the thousand hills, the earth, and everything in it is his. He is the creator of things seen and unseen, known and unknown. He knows everything. So if we extend our trust and this is for me just as much as for anyone else like we extend our trust and faith in him for these things he will provide and supernaturally so he will provide the food that we need the water that we need purify it he can keep a house supernaturally cool without even an air conditioner running hallelujah and that's but a small thing in the sight of the lord Glory to God. So we need our faith to be stretched. And it is being stretched. And it's going to be stretched in the days ahead. But what power source are you hooked up to? What water source are you hooked up to? Are you hooked up to the the local water source? The local power source? Or are you hooked up to the King of Kings? The Lord of Lords? The living water? The well that never runs dry? The well that you can just keep coming to, coming to? And it never depletes. And in fact, the more you drink, the thirstier you get for more of him. The more you eat of him, the hungrier you are for more. The more that you abide in that secret place, in the king's armory, uh, you know, that's uh, that's where it's at. That's the place to be now more than ever. You know, we need to be in the king's armory because that's where we get our battle orders. That's where we get refreshment. That's where we get our... Uh, you know our our marching orders that's where we get the you know how we learn how to fight you know our enemies and he trains our hands for war he teaches us to bend the bow of bronze he gives us strength for battle and we are those arrows in his quiver and his bow to be shot forth to pierce the darkness and we are his holy battle axe to slice through demons and devils glory to god he is going to use us in such ways in the days ahead. But we have to be obedient and faithful now. And this time that we're in now, is it's a, it's a training ground. You know, it's, it's experience. And as any soldier knows, that's where you get the spirit experiences in the fight, in the battles, in the skirmishes. That's how you learn. That's how you learn your enemy. That's how you learn yourself. And that's how you learn your commander. Because God is our commander, the Lord of heaven's armies. He is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. And I know I probably mispronounced that, but it means Lord of hosts. He is. He's the Lord of heaven's armies. Hallelujah. And we're in that army. Glory to God. And that's the greatest army in the universe. Yeah, man has their technology. Satan has his enemies and his, his sorceries and perversities. But Jesus Christ has sons and daughters. Hallelujah. And we are those children of the Most High God. And we have that fire in us, that Holy Spirit burning in us brightly and fiercely and hot. But we need it to be hotter still. Praise God. We need to go after him more still. Oh, he is so good. Oh, he's so worthy. Praise Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the only begotten Son of God who came in the flesh. He was born of a virgin. He lived that holy, righteous, spotless life, 24-7 submission to the Father, because we can never do it. All Everything was fulfilled in and through Jesus Christ, the Son. Glory to God. So, <clears throat> what if... Instead of being anxious, because I know I have to, f I fight through that at times. Since the enemy tries to put fear and anxiousness and of the what ifs and the through the enemy's plots and agendas, but what if instead of that we we face this uh, what is to come with a smile on our face, with a ferocity that these demons and devils go down in Jesus' name, that we crush these serpents under our feet in through Jesus Christ and his power, his might, through his provisions, through his armory, because he has armored us for this battle. We are armored up, fired up, fueled up, powered up, and we are locked, and on Christ the solid rock we stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So praise God that when this battle comes, instead of running away as others will, 
Let us run towards the fight. Let us run towards these demons and devils because we know who goes before us. We know who goes with us. We know if he is with us, who or what can be against us. So we we run towards these things with a smile on our face. Is that a, uh, a surety in ourself, our own prowess? No, it's a surety of Christ Jesus and Christ through us. Glory to God. God is so good. You know, so he's going to do this, and he is doing it, but he's going to do it more in the days ahead. Glory to God. So I want to share that little encouragement with you guys that there's an infilling that's coming that we've not ever seen, and we've only heard Mir's mention of it because it's one thing to hear, like read about it, but it's another thing to be in it and to be immersed in it, to be filled by it. But that's what's coming these days ahead. You are going to be fired up and powered up and transformed so that you can do what God's called you to do in these times ahead because there's no other way that you could do it glory to God and you will have a holy resolve about you that no matter what comes to live is the Christ to die is the gain we win in Jesus there is no defeat there is no turning back because you've put your hand to the plow therefore you don't turn back you don't look back like Lot's wife we go forward in Jesus because forward and what's ahead is better than what's behind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as a soldier marches forward, forward to victory in Jesus Christ. Because we don't give ground in Christ. We go forward and we are going to take back the land. We're going to take back the generational lines that have been, you know, messed with throughout our families. You know, on our mom's side, dad's side, we are that one that stands in the gap, the repairer of the waste places, the desolations of many generations. Because we are that holy standard that the Lord has raised up and is raising up to do his good will, to accomplish his purposes in the days ahead. That's you guys. So rejoice and be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And remember, he is the resurrection and the life. And he who dies, yet we believe in him, yet will we live. Hallelujah. To lose your life is to find it. But if you try to save your life, you will lose it. Glory to God. Praise God. So I just wanted to share that encouragement with you guys. I love you. And God bless you. God keep you. God shine his face on you now and the days ahead. And if you guys need any prayers... Uh, encouragement just please message us don't hesitate and we need it too so if you guys have any of that for us oh we, we so treasure it we love you guys god bless you all right take care